You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. Arguing with God In my post, What is the Bible? Part 1, I talked a little bit about some of the narrative passages in the Old Testament where the characters argue with God. The most famous case is Abraham in Genesis chapter 18, but I also mentioned Amos, who also haggles with God in the visions in chapter 7. Today I want to look at a genre of psalm that argues with God. Biblical scholars nowadays call them complaints, and that's basically what they are. They're psalms in which the psalmist complains that the world is out of kilter, that things are not what they ought to be, and argues with God about it. In the book of Psalms we don't get these Psalms in a context with a story. We get them just on their own, alone like a diamond that's not set in a ring. So I want to start by looking at a complaint that's outside the book of Psalms because we also find complaints elsewhere, especially in the prophets and in particular in the book of Jeremiah. There are a whole collection of them. They used to be called the Confessions of Jeremiah that conjures up the wrong impression. Jeremiah is not confessing his sin. Jeremiah is arguing with God. Take a look at chapter 12. You'll be in the right, O Lord, when I lay charges against you, but let me put my case to you. You see? Jeremiah is arguing with God. He's turning back on God. The imagery that the prophets normally used for God dealing with Israel, the lawsuit, He recognizes at the start that God is right. You'll be in the right, O Lord. But still he's going to lay the charges, when I lay charges against you. Let me put my case to you. Why does the way of the guilty prosper? Why do all who are treacherous thrive? You plant them, and they take root. They grow and bring forth fruit. You're near in their mouths, yet far from their hearts. Well, we know the world's like that. We all know or know of rotten people who prosper, and we all know good people who suffer. Surely, if God is all-powerful, God could make a better world than this. You could and I could, we're quite sure. But you, O Lord, know me, in verse 3. You see me and test me. My heart is with you. You see, even though I see all these things going on around me in the world, and even though I want to take you to task for them, Lord, you know me, and you know I love you, says the prophet, and then continues, Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter, and set them apart for the day of slaughter. How long will the land mourn, and the grass of every field wither? For the wickedness of those who live in it, the animals and the birds are swept away, and because the people said, He is blind to our ways. And that's the core of Jeremiah's problem. Because the world is as it is, it is quite possible for the people to say, He is blind to our ways. That's the core and heart of the complaint psalm. That God does not do justice to God's self. that because God allows the wicked to prosper and the good to suffer people can claim that either God doesn't know or doesn't care or has no power so God do something about it that's the heart of the complaint and the complaint is the commonest form of psalm there are more of them than any other kind of psalm far more than thanksgivings far more than praise So. Is the Bible the Word of God? Yes. Was the Bible dictated by God? Doesn't seem like it, does it? It seems like the complaint psalms witness to humanity struggling with God, to God's people arguing with God, begging God to deal with that central horrible problem. Why do the evil prosper and the wicked suffer? Of course, Jeremiah's a prophet, and even when he's complaining, 
he doesn't leave God speechless. But God's reply to Jeremiah is too complicated and I'm out of time. We'll have to come back to that in another post. For now, make sure some of your prayers are complaints, or God won't know that you love. God bless.